Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah today. You know, our God is an awesome God. He's so merciful, gracious, loving, and kind. And yet, He is also just and righteous. Righteousness is the foundation of His throne. Hallelujah. Truth. The Word of the Lord teaches us that man was created perfect put in the garden and he was without sin and God spoke to Adam and Eve and he said in the well actually he spoke to Adam Eve wasn't created yet but he said to them he said you can eat of every tree of the garden but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat in the day you eat thereof you shall surely die and Eve was tempted of Satan and she reasoned in her mind instead of being dependent looking okay to her husband and going to her husband and saying hey this serpent came and was telling me this and this and this see and as a couple as one flesh they should be dependent totally upon God looking to God see but when when they reasoned within themselves then she took the fruit she took the fruit she she depended on herself, okay, and sin entered in, and that was the sin, depending on our self, okay. So that's the first definition right there in the in the Word of God. You know, it's it's a it's a self dependence, it's independence, it's being away from the Lord and doing it our own way, thinking that we are making it in. Now the Bible teaches us. In Isaiah, it says that all our righteousness are as filthy rags. Okay, and that word "filthy rags" is a menstruous cloth. It's that's that's it's an abomination. Okay, all of our righteousness, our righteousness, all that we can do to be good and do right and have good morals and everything else that we can uh, conjure up in our own thinking. It's filthy rags to God. It's filthy rags to Yahweh. Okay? Now, we hear talk about sinless perfection, sinless perfection, and these false teachers, and they're false teachers because, and, and when I say that, now people will jump on me and say, it's okay that John's saying it's alright to sin. No, it is not. Let me reiterate. It's not okay. It never is okay to sin. It's not right to sin. It's wrong. It's unrighteousness. It's sin. It's missing the mark. They never uh, tell you exactly what sin is. Sin is missing the mark. God set a mark. God drew a line. And man has crossed the line. Every man has crossed the line. Okay? Now, Jesus came, and you want to know what sinless perfection is, it's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is sinless perfection. He was perfect in every way. He's the only man who's ever lived on this earth perfect. Perfectly obedient to the Father. He always said yes to the Father. He was fully God and fully man. And when he walked this earth, he operated as a man dependent on the Father. And the Spirit of the Father, the Holy Ghost, was flowing through Him, hallelujah, manifesting through Him that He was the Son of God, very God and very man, hallelujah. But He never depended upon Himself as a man. He always looked to the Father. You see, that's the difference between Jesus Christ and people who believe that they can do something in order to be right with God. Okay? Believe. That's what the Bible teaches us. We have to believe. Okay? Jesus came preaching saying, Repent and believe. See? It's not enough just to repent and turn away from your sins and start walking a, a good and holy life. Okay? That you think's holy. You have to believe. Because if you don't have the belief, then you don't have the blood. And if you don't have the blood, then your sins are still there. See? 
But when you get the blood applied to your heart, you get the blood applied to your heart, then you are righteous before the Father because Christ is righteous. And you have Christ Jesus' righteousness within. Hallelujah. And that's what the Father sees. But the old nature of man, the old nature that's still hanging on with us, has to be crucified. Daily. It's a daily thing. And moment by moment, many times. Because there's a fierce battle and the devil wants to take your soul to hell. Okay, The devil wants to make your life miserable. The devil knows what the Word of God says. The Word of God has principles laid down in it that whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. So if you sow into sin and you're, and you're sowing into rebellion against God and you're sowing into this, into this uh, field of worms and maggots, okay, that sin is then you're going to reap that. You're going to reap that in your life. And God knows that. And God says, no. God says, here, I, I give you my son, and my son will fill you with his grace and with his power so that when you're tempted to sin, you can look to me. You can, you can say, Father, you can, you can say, Father, I submit to you. I look to you and resist the devil and watch the devil flee. See? But what happens is, People sit around thinking about sin. They think about sin. They think about their sin. Let's, let's take a person who's hooked on masturbation, okay? They sit around. I, I used to be hooked on that, okay? M most of my life, up till I was 35 years old. And it was a sin. It was an abomination. It's idol worship. Now, I just use that one example. But sitting around thinking, oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. They're thinking about this act of sin, Okay, and that's all they think about, and then they sin. And people that all they're talking about is sin, that's all they're thinking about is sin. Where's the heart? Where is their heart? It's sin. <laughs> that's all they talk about. But see, we need to talk about the grace and the mercy and the love and the truth and the power that we have in Christ. See, to submit to God. To submit and just look up at the Father and, and then just bow our heads and say, Oh, Father, I submit to you. I'm being tempted by the enemy over here to get angry at my wife. I'm being tempted over here by the enemy, oh, Lord, to be angry at my husband. I'm being tempted, Lord, to, to lash out at my kids or my boss. Oh, God, help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. See, you submit to God. You submit to God. And then you resist the devil. You open your mouth and you say, Satan, you lying spirit, you get away from me in Jesus' name by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb, Lord, put your put your Son's blood all over me. Oh, Jesus, come, fill me with your grace. See? And you have to do that. And if you're on a job, you can't. sometimes you can't open your mouth and do it. But Hannah, she was praying in the temple, and her lips were moving. Her lips were just moving. She was just... Her lips were just moving. And, and uh, Eli the priest thought she was a crazy woman, thought she was, she was filled with the devil, see? But her heart was crying out. So when you're at work and you're being tempted and your co-workers are dogging you because you're a Christian or whatever, you just pray under your under your in your spirit, under your lips, you know, and and just just pray to God. Submit to God. Okay? You have power. We have power to say no to the devil, no to sin. But we have to exercise that power. We have to count ourselves dead indeed unto sin. Dead. And then we come out in newness of life every day. We go to the cross daily. We say, God, slay me. Slay this old nature. And then we walk in newness of life. We walk in resurrection power. Hallelujah. And we're able to make it through that day. We only have to go through one day. And it's Jesus bringing us, carrying us. Hallelujah. It's His grace doing the work. It's not us. If it wasn't for Jesus Christ and His sacrifice, no one would be saved. No one. But some people believe that you have to do something, you have to add to the sacrifice of Christ, and you don't. It is by grace through faith. By grace through faith. Okay, now look at the scripture here. I looked, I typed in, uh, in, in the scripture, in, in the search engine on Esort, I typed in um, sinless perfection, and it's not in the Bible. Okay, sinless, those, those two words are not in the Bible together, or in the same verse. Okay, um, so then I typed in without sin, okay, because I knew that would be there. 
And so I found it, and it's Hebrews 9.28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin. Hallelujah. Unto salvation. Hallelujah. Without sin. Hallelujah. Unto salvation. When Jesus Christ splits the eastern sky, that's it. I mean, it's done. We're in eternity. Hallelujah. It's manifest. We all get a glorified body. Hallelujah. At that moment, eternity right there, manifest. Because we're in eternity now. We just happen to be passing through this, this, this veil, this, this, um, what do you want to call it? This place that God created for us to pass through. Hallelujah! And it's a pilgrim journey, and it's tough, but we're making it through by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. See, as Christians, we are seated in heavenly places in Christ. Okay, but if all we think about is sin and 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 what sin is and all we're think, talking about is sin and we're making video after video after video talking about sin, 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 sin you know then where's your dwelling? it's not in heaven because there ain't no sin in heaven hallelujah praise God see hallelujah see the world is looking for an answer and I, when I say the world I don't mean the world system I'm talking about individual people out in the world who are going through problems they, all their life they've done it their own way and now they're they're in their 30s or 40s or 50s and their life's a mess and they're up to their eyeballs and dead and it's going out the top of their head and, and they want some answers. There's no hope. And the, the government's not giving them hope. Their boss ain't giving them hope. Their spouses ain't giving them no hope. They're looking for hope. And the only hope there is is the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we got to give them that hope. See? But we have to be hopeful people, don't we? We have to be that expression of Jesus Christ to them. See? But not downplaying sin. Not saying it's okay to sin. It's not okay to sin. It's wrong to sin. It grieves the Holy Spirit when we sin. And sin is a, is a transgression of the law. It's a willful act of the, of the man or woman to transgress God's law. With full knowledge knowing, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to go do that. And that's what God looks at and says, no, now you're going to reap this. See, God says that. And it grieves the Holy Spirit because God will not violate. He will not give you crop failure. You will reap it. So you don't want to do it. Okay? And only God knows the time. See, Jesus said in, in the book of, of, of Revelation, it's recorded, he says, he says, come back to me, repent. See? And I will not blot your name out of the book which I have written. Okay, So it's possible. It's possible that Jesus will blot a person's name out of the book. And we don't want that to happen to us. So we continue to cry out to him. Cry out to him. Hallelujah. But what we see here, and it says, it says that Jesus, he's coming the second, he's going to appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews 4.25 for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. See, he was tempted in every way that we are to, to rely upon himself, to do something out from himself. That's what sin is. It's self, self, self. And if you're trying, if you're trying to resist the devil and trying to do right and, and walk in a holy way before God yourself, by yourself, by your own actions, okay, and you maybe you do it for a week, maybe you do it for two weeks, you know, and you're not conscious in your own mind that you've done anything wrong, you haven't transgressed God's, God's law, and then, then boom, you fall, you know, then, then you repent and get up and you go again for another three days and then boom, you fall. So you're trying to do it and you're not getting any deliverance. You get deliverance by believing and by calling upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And you call upon Him. You say, Lord, deliver me. Deliver me from this lust. Deliver me from this anger. Deliver me from this pride. See? And He does. He delivers you. But then you have to maintain that. And you do that by prayer and by looking to the Lord. And every day and walking with Him and loving Him and praising Him. Hallelujah. Okay? Now... One place where it's called, talking about without sin is in John 8 and verse 7. So when they continued asking him, these are the Pharisees asking, these are the Pharisees, the self-righteous Pharisees, who were not doing anything wrong. Okay, they were holy men, all right? 
In the eyes of the people, man, they were, woo, the Pharisee, holy guys, man. You know, and there's people all around the world and on YouTube too that, that look all holy to people and the way they talk and everything else, the way they look. You know, they look holy to people and people think they're holy people. Okay? And all they talk about is sin. See? That's what these Pharisees were doing. Yeah, that's what they were doing. They were talking about sin. We found this woman caught in adultery. What do you say? You know? And they're talking to God Almighty. See? In the book of Jeremiah says that, that the sin of Judah is written in the earth. See? And Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground. You know? And J. Vernon McGee, in, one of, in his sermon on, in his uh, teaching on, on this verse, he, he, he said, he, he said, I believe Jesus was writing their sin. He was writing it backwards where they could read it. He was writing all their sin out on the ground, you know, and they were reading what he was writing, you see. And Jesus said, and he that is without sin among you, he that is without sin among you, cast the first stone. Hmm. Let him first cast a stone at her. And so that's what the Lord would say to all you people who preach this false doctrine of sinless perfection. Okay, He among you who is without sin, let him cast the first stone at the people who believe the truth. Later on in John 8, Jesus says, you know, who of you convinceth me of sin? See, See they, they didn't have nothing on Jesus. Because everything Jesus did was the Father doing it in him and through him. Hallelujah. And we can be the same way. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. We walk in the same way. See? But it's not easy because we're living in a society today. You think the apostles lived in a bad society? We live in a bad society today. But it was just as evil back then as it is today. There's just more evil today. Okay? It's more manifest. It's more in your face. But we have power, children of God. We have power. The Almighty God lives within us. We have power to be like our Savior. To let Him transform us into His image. And after His likeness. And it's a narrow way. And it's pressing. And it's hard. But He went the narrow way. And it was hard for him. And he suffered temptation every single day, all the time, being tempted by the devil. Being tempted by people trying to tell him, do this, do that. When we read the Gospels, we're only reading a snippet of Jesus' journey through this earth for three and a half years before men. Manifest before men as the Son of God. We're just reading a little bit. But he was he was, he suffered temptation. It says right there in every way, like as we are. And you think about all the millions of people who profess their name to be Christian, and those I mean millions who are truly born again, in all the temptations Jesus suffered all those for us. But he didn't sin, and it's by his obedience, by his obedience, by one man's obedience, many are made righteous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can find that in the book of Romans chapter 5. See, we have to take the whole counsel of God. God has done the work. Okay? God has done the work. When you're tempted to sin, submit to God. Surrender. Surrender. Submit to God. Resist the devil. And watch the devil flee in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.